Image relationships are another really important element of deconstructing visual texts. So let's look at some specific techniques. Juxtaposition is when you deliberately put two objects together to make an association or relationship. This often shows why they're similar. So in this picture, for example, the tall man with the small girl. Yes, they're very different, but the fact that they're placed together clearly shows that they have a strong father-daughter relationship, perhaps. This is different entirely to the idea of contrast. This is where two very different things are put together. However, this is to show why they're different, not why they're the same. So this image shows the beautiful old church, which is being towered over by the very modern glass skyscraper. So we're not seeing the relationship of the previous image, we're seeing the differences, the contrast in, the, in this image. It's important to note that some people do wrongly use contrast and juxtaposition interchangeably, but they are actually different techniques. A third technique which you can use is focus. This is the place on the page where your eye is drawn to when you first look at the picture. So we talked about that when we were looking at how to analyse an image. So what stands out? So in this image, colour is used to make the red apple stand out from all of the rest. The focus is also often close to the centre of the image. So if you look to the very middle, that's often where you're going to see what the focus is. A fourth technique which you can make use of is the technique of frame. So frame when you're looking at this. Ask yourself, what's at the edge of the picture? Why was it included? Or why wasn't it left out? It usually helps to create a rectangular cropped feel to the image. So it's not literally necessarily a frame, but the frame is the word which demonstrates what is included in the image and what isn't. A fifth technique which you can use is a vector. Now a vector are lines on a page which create a direction for your eye to travel in a specific order. So it's really going to give you a starting point and then lead you across the page. The lines demonstrate the way in which the author of the image wants you to view the image. So you know the lines direct your eye across the image. This gives you something to follow and often this is a subconscious thing you do without even realising. It's the thing that the composer uses to make you look at the image the way he wants you to. This is similar to the idea of where the eye is led or a directional line. 